Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I want to show you how to do an HDR panorama in Lightroom. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Sir Germany. I'm a French photographer from the amazing, the incredible, the romantic city of Paris. But I'm in New York right now, working on my color book of New York City. And I want to talk to you about a new feature that just came out on Lightroom, HDR Panorama. I'm giving you all the raw files so you can do your own Pano HDR. Click up there to get the raw files or the link down below the video. Let me show you how to do an HDR panorama in Lightroom. Okay, there is a new option that came out in, if you go to Lightroom, about Lightroom Classic, it should be release 8.0. And that's something I've been waiting for a long time, which is Pano HDR. So what is a Pano HDR? Well, I'll give you one of my best examples. I'm actually gonna give you all these raw files so you can play around with them. This is the MC Waffles in Big Sur, California, one of the nicest lagoon sort of beach uh, it's a place you can't really go down to. You can only shoot it from high up. And I came there with an amazing sunset. So I took a series of, that's a normal shot, an underexposed shot and an overexposed shot. But I felt I wanted to get more. So I went a little higher up. That's the normal exposure. That's the underexposure. And that's the overexposure. See how crazy that sunset was. I was so lucky. Then I moved to the right. That's the normal exposure. That is the underexposure. And that's the overexposure. Now, check this out. I'm going to select all of that, right click, photo merge, and here's a new option, HDR panorama. Yes, HDR panorama. So not only it's going to create uh, an HDR for every photo, but it's also going to make it to a panorama. Now the HDR in Lightroom is a very natural HDR. All it does is really give you the details of the highlights and shadows you're missing. Uh, as any panorama, you have different options which is uh, basically what they call projections. It's a different way to uh, basically put together your panorama. So I always look for spherical. The problem with spherical and cylindrical, you see how the horizon is completely curved? And that's not good because that's really hard to correct and it really is destroyed. But if you take perspective, not the horizon is straight. Something is weird there, but this part I don't really care about. Uh, in fact, um, I am just gonna go and click on merge. Now, you, I don't, you don't want to do auto crop because then I'm gonna lose a lot of the sky. And uh, I like some of the sky there. Auto settings, you see auto setting is gonna do some color correction for you using all exposure, create stacks. That's kind of cool because that's gonna stack all the photo into one thing. So, um, and it says, warning, each your brackets merge with align image and it goes off. To merge with different settings, merge the HDR bracket individually before merging the resulting HDR DNG to a panorama. What it means is that if you want to use the option of deghosting, which is deghosting is important when you have a bit of wind and your leaf is different from like one photo to the other, like there is movement and it's going to make like a ghosting effect. Now, in this case, I don't have the issue because there was no wind at all. So all three photos, the leaf, the trees and plants are almost in the exact same position. So I'm going to click on merge and... Uh, it's gonna create an HDR panorama. But what's crazy about it is that HDR panorama is just gonna be like one super raw file, okay? And um, that's always interesting. So here we are, that's the HDR panorama. It went pretty fast because it's, you know, a lot of photos. And now you're like, yeah, but how do we do this? Well, what I do, because it's a raw file, before I go to Photoshop and sort of start cropping it, I mean, I can crop it, you know, I can, I can go in there and then, uh, you know, make sure the horizon is straight. I can crop this whole part here because I don't really care about that. What I do care is a little bit of, uh, about the uh, this sky here missing. And I'll show you in Photoshop how to get that back. Maybe just like that. So, you know, it's still very cropped. But look at this. If I press I on my keyboard uh, and I, I do big prints for galleries, it's still... Uh, you know, 6,000, sorry, 6,859 pixels wide. So it's still a lot of pixel, enough for a gallery to do a very nice print. And now I'm ready to do my magic because the thing is now you're dealing with a 32-bit image, meaning when you bring on the highlights, you're getting all the highlights back. When you open up the shadows, you're getting all the open shadow from the overexposed photo, uh, from the highlights you're getting from the underexposed photo. I can do my black point. I can do my white point. 
you know, and look how crazy it was. It was really like that. It was, the whole sky was like pink. I can adjust the white balance. I think something like this. And I didn't even touch it. It was a very saturated, saturated scene. Uh, so we just have to get that, maybe add a bit of contrast, not too much. Okay. And when you do with HDR, sometimes I, I think it's a little too much on the uh, on the highlights. So I'm going to bring that down. I, I want to go for a very natural feeling. Like really the, 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 the feeling that I had when I was there, I don't want to, you know, add too much saturation like this. It's going to be crazy. Uh, I think the whole photo is a little too magenta. So I'm going to back down a little bit. And then I want to do something about this guy. So I'm missing this guy here. I know I am. So first, but I'm first going to go here. I'm going to lower the exposure because I really want to put some emphasis on the sky here. And then uh, I think the photo still lacks of contrast. I, I still want a very contrasty photo. Contrasty photo do really well on the web. And then uh, I think, you know, I'm going to use a, a nicer bracket here for the bottom. Lower the exposure because I don't like the, this whole uh, part here. I don't really like. Okay, well, that's way too, too dark. Just make it a little bit darker. What I do really like, what I want people to look at is really... Uh, the sky here and the lagoon. So I'm going to make a big circle, invert it, feather it, and where, wherever the, I want people to look at, I'm maybe going to add a bit of yellow in that part and a bit of exposure just there because I want people to look here. And then I'm going to make another circle here. I'm going to invert it. I'm going to feather it. And I want to add maybe just a little bit of light in the lagoon because I like that. Look at this. This is a beach where there is a waterfall on the beach. It's, it's great. It's really good. Okay, and I do like all my retorching in Euring this because I want to correct this later on in Photoshop. So we still get a bit of a distortion here on the tree, which is kind of a whatever. But, um, and maybe, uh, you know, because I used the, uh, I should have gone a little less wide if I didn't want that distortion. But th that, that sunset was so quick, that's all I had. But honestly, I really like this panorama. But I think the way I've printed it, at the end was something like this. I did something like this. I didn't want it to be so wide because I didn't like that the, the tree was too too stretched here. Uh, and I took this a while ago. It's just I, I, I love re revisiting my old photos as new technology comes out. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's take care of uh, the sharpening first. So let's go in there and I'm going to sharpen this. Usually I go, I have this formula where I go about 90% of sharpening, uh, about 10 of noise reduction and about 50 of masking. Okay, that's a little bit my formula. It gives me a good sharp photo. Yes, I love it. And now let's right click, edit into Photoshop CC 2019. Yes, because now we are in 2019. I've updated all my Lightroom and Photoshop. Photoshop, I'm gonna drag and drop this here so I can show you the before and after. And on this, I'm gonna take the uh, polygon lasso tool and just make one click, two click, three click, four, and just close it. So now I have a selection that's a little bit bigger than, than this, and I, all I have to do is go to Edit, uh, Contour Aware Fill. And now we have a new option in Contour Aware Fill, which is really cool. It's part of Photoshop CC 2019, where I can uh, uh, mask out, like I don't want the tree to come to this place, I only want the sky. So if you go here, you see, I can mask out uh, with the minus. By default, it's that. So I'm, I'm, I'm masking out and says, don't take into consideration this part of the photo. So anything which is green is going to get taken into consideration to replace that missing element. I don't want Photoshop to look at this part of the photo. I only want Photoshop to look at the sky here. Okay, and then... Um, now this is a cool option. You see, see we see here in real time what's going to happen. And you see, it's kind of there is like something a little bit weird here. It doesn't look like completely in. So I can go to color adaptation and go very high, and check this out. If I go very high, look, the sky is just perfect. And then I click OK, and this is uh, and I'll do another video just on on this new option. So it put it into a, a new layer. Undo. So that's with the new sky. Okay, and then I'm just gonna basically save this because all I wanted is Photoshop for that and it's going to re-import into Lightroom with this corrected. We have a little bit of an issue there. I didn't crop it properly, but that's fine. 
So I'm back in Lightroom and voila, I'm just going to crop that because there was something missing. And there you have it, uh, HDR Pano using Lightroom and Photoshop CC 2019 and their new option. All right, guys, I hope you like this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the little subscribe button and the little bell so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. And download the source files and follow along. You will love it. See you in another video.